Hi everyone, thanks for coming today. So um, as Shauna said, my name is Rebecca Russell. I'm an academic advisor in biological sciences. Last year I went up for ESS and promotion, so I'm now an academic advisor three. Um, my story is a little bit different because I've actually been with Wayne State since 2009. Um, one of the things that's part of ESS is your ESS clock. And your ESS gets granted by your college. So when I started at Wayne State in 2009, I was with the School of Business. I was in an ESS track position. But because I switched to a different college and a different position, my ESS clock did start over. So I was granted ESS a year early with the College of Liberal Arts and Science. And I will go into all of those details. But essentially what ESS is, it stands for the Employment Security Status. And it means that you move from being a contract employee to a permanent employee. It is essentially tenure for staff members. So once you uh, attain your ESS, you are a, considered a permanent employee. The purpose of ESS is to garner in a comfortable environment between the staff and the university. So we want to retain good employees. And as an employee, this is a perk or a benefit for you. You are no longer having to worry about being on one or two year contracts your position is permanent with the university once you attain ESS. Um, ESS is granted by your college. So I know some staff members on campus have moved from one college to the other and it is something you can negotiate to have it move with you. Um, but it would need to be negotiated because ESS does get determined by your college um, when you go up. So for ESS to be eligible, you do need to be in an ESS track um, position and part of the union. Um, the process for ESS is very similar to promotion, which Moyer is going to talk about in a little bit. Um, because I went up for ESS and promotion at the same time, I got to submit one packet with just a little bit of different information. But to go up for ESS, um, oh, I'm stealing the library's page because they did a really, really good job of having all of this information up. So instead of recreating the wheel, I'm just going to present on it. Um, but So you go up for ESS um, at the start of your fourth year because you need to have ESS in place by your fifth anniversary. So typically, ESS, the calls go out in uh, November time frame because the selective salary process and everything happens in April. So in November, you would notify October, November time frame, you would notify your department chair that your ESS time is here and your department chair would write a letter, hopefully of support for you, to be um, granted ESS. You then um, have a packet that you submit once you've been approved by your department chair and the packet, I gave you a handout, has a cover sheet and includes some specific information and you submit in your packet a personal statement as to why you feel you should be granted ESS. So what have you done well? ESS is based off of your job performance, so how have you proven that you've been a consistent, good employee for Wayne State University? Um, your chair or director's recommendation letter. You include your full Wayne State professional record, and as you do sign the bottom of that. You provide your evaluations from the previous four years as a part of your ESS packet. And then evidence of excellence in job performance. So think of this as kind of your artifacts, your proof of what have I done over the last four years. Um, in my ESS packet, I had um, emails from students or other staff members that talked about uh, appreciating something that I had done. I included presentations that I had created, um, reviews. So in my department in biological sciences, I coordinated a career fair for the first three years that I was there. So I included feedback from the employers about how well the event went. Um, and then I had, like I said, some letters from some students, some emails that I had included as a part of my packet. So your ESS packet is a proof of what you've done over four years that you've excelled in your job. And typically, um, packets, because I've been on the committee also this past year for class, I've seen a couple of packets. A small package for ESS would be around probably 60 pages. Some of the packets that have come through for ESS have been up to 120 pages. 
So it just depends on what types of artifacts you include. If you include a PowerPoint that's 20, you know, 20 slides and each slide is one page, obviously your packet's going to be longer because of that. Um, but that's the typical range for a package that I've seen through the College of Liberal Arts and Science. Once you have compiled your packet, that goes for review by your peer committee. If you are in a department that has a department committee, so if you are in a unit that has at least three other members that already have ESS, it gets reviewed by your unit before it goes to your college committee. If you don't have a committee, so in biology, we used to have a committee. We had three staff members that had ESS. So when I went up, was going to go up for ESS originally, I would have gone to my department committee first. However, by the time I got to the ESS, uh, one of the ESS staff members, or one of the tenured uh, members had left, so we no longer had a college unit, or a department unit, sorry. So we went to the college unit for review. So it is a peer review of your packet, and then... This happens um, in the typically February time frame, and the packets have now left the college review and go on to the, either the dean or the vice president of your unit for ESS to be granted. Um, so that's the typical range of ESS. Yes? Are these physical pieces? No, that is okay. absolutely. It used to be you printed out copies and you had a physical binder that you turned in okay. six or seven copies of however many people were going to be on the committee. Now you can do it all electronically. So one of the tips that I recommend that you do that made it a lot easier for me is over the time kind of keep a folder or something on your desktop and put things in there that you're going to want to include in your packet. So when it comes time to construct your packet, you're not searching for materials, trying to scan copies of old things or find presentations on your desktop. It's all in one spot and it's nice and easy to um, go through and find and put together. In my department, my uh, secretary's chair did all of the compiling of the package for me, so I sent her all of my PDFs in the correct order, and she compiled the packets into the CDs and, or sent them to wherever they needed to go. So I did have that benefit of not having to do that part myself. Um, so that's the main process for ESS. Um, does anybody have any questions? Yes? So I personally did because my previous position was so much different than what I do now. Um, however, for my promotion packet, which I know is a little different, I included evaluators from my previous role. To consider it but so the way it worked is for the school of business I was actually doing uh, career advising and worked in the career office and when I switched over to the College of Liberal Arts and Science I switched to an academic advising role so my artifacts in in what I was doing was completely different than what I do in my current role Years. You have five years, you have to get ESS if you're in an ES position. If you don't get it, you do not get another contract after that. Um, you said that Paul's got in November defenders timeline says that eight months prior to your anniversary right now. I'm sorry, did, did you want to, I'm sorry, we're part of us. Yeah, it's, now this is one of those things that when we talk about these, it's obvious, it's, this is tied, I'm like, for promotion and ESS are tied to your well, ESS is tied to your individual yeah. time. Some of us start in August, some of you are hired in June, some of you are hired in... So, the time for the five years, when we're talking about the five years, is based on that. So when you look at your... your when you get your contract renewal in around your third, fourth year, you start looking at your timing. It also, though, is dependent on where you are. If you're in a college that has the big structures and big class, library systems, they put it on a year that coincides more less with the individual and more with the, the, the college's year. So you need to keep track of your own time and know when you're at so that you, you get into the prep time. The contract actually says it's, you're eligible to apply no sooner than you're at the beginning of your fourth year or your fifth year, so after your four years is done, mm -hmm. and no later than it's either five or six months. So there's a window 
And that window usually corresponds then with, the, with your college's timeline. There's, this is an adaptive, adaptive, adaptive timeline that comes from a recommended one that's posted on the provost um, site that is very close to this. You can look at that one to see where it differs from your own if you're not in the library system, but also recognize that if you're in a college, if you're in a division, or like I've got, I've got core members of DOSA who are going up, and they're going up right now for their ESS consideration because it goes up. If you're not in the college, it goes to your division vice president. So that's the division of academic affairs. It's like Monica Brockmeyer, um, here, Ahmad Ezzedine, Dawn, Bentley, and, and um, advising and admissions and uh, financial aid. So the thing for if you're on the ESS track now, know when your contract dates are, <coughs> and then know that there's a window, and then line that up with your wherever you're situated, your window with your individual time. For ESS, those two things have to coincide. Thank you. Um, could you submit the names? Um, the evaluators are a part of the promotion package. So because I went up for the the two at the same time, my package had evaluators. Um, but, so essentially I had one statement as to why I should get promotion with a separate statement about ESS. So that's the benefit of going up for them at the same time is you're only submitting one packet of a lot of these details, but they do need to have the components from both packets as a part of it. So really the main difference between the packages is that for promotion you need to have evaluators, whereas for ESS it's based off of, it's supposed to be based off of job performance and professional achievement with service. Um, it can be considered, but it's not required as a part of um, the decision for ESS, and it is granted by the college, whereas promotion, you then go beyond the college, which Moira will talk about, to the university committee. Did you still have a question over here? Or No? Okay. Any other questions? I think this is a wonderful time to go ahead and get started. Exactly. <laughs> Okay, recording. Okay. Hello, everyone, again. We're getting ready to start back. I can't whistle real loud. I can only talk to you. There we go. There it is. Okay, so for some of the few who are just joining us, um, our next presenter is Moira Fracasa. She's in the Office of Student Affairs at the College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences. She is going to go over promotion because she is about to go from her three to her four and she did her two to her three in 2014. So I leave it to Moira. Hi everybody. Thank you. My name is Julie again. Um, we did get loud food so I'll try to talk loud so I can, you know, you can hear me over your own crunching. Um, as Shauna mentioned, um, I'm planning to apply next year, and so not to set myself up or anything, but now I really hope I get it since I'm standing here talking to you about this, right? <laughs> um, I've actually gone through the process twice before. Um, this will strike you as a little bit odd because I went from a two to a three twice before. Um, I changed jobs, and if anybody is interested in hearing about happiness versus salary, I'll be happy to talk to you later, uh, and I will do that. It was worth, uh, it, was worth it. Um, and I've been on the promotion committee at the university as well, so that's just sort of a little bit of my background. Um, so we've talked, I'm going to, I have a little presentation here. We've talked about a lot of it, so I'm going to gloss over um, bits and pieces of it, but there's things I want to highlight. Um, for promotion, we are all very ambitious, we're very self-motivated, we love just attaining our best selves, but why else might you want to get a promotion? Money. Yes. So um, it does come with a raise that is um, a little bit better than it's going to be in your annual uh, salary, selective salary. Um, it is either 5% of your salary or the um, puts you at the minimum of your salary range for your job category. So there are charts for that online so you can see and compare, but it is um, a nice uh, talk of change usually. Um, in addition to feeling good. So um, we talked a little bit about the time, the difference in timeline, so um, I'm going to get to that in a minute. Some of this we've talked about already before. This is advice you're going to hear over and over and over again. Just keep all of this stuff current. You do something, you do a presentation, you attend something, have a folder. Um, Rebecca had a great recommendation for just keeping it all digitally because that's the way it's going to be anyway. So sort of have that going. 
Um, and one of the things that, on top of just documents that I would recommend, is contacts. Um, we help out at a conference that was three years ago. Um, we might have those people's names. We might have them in the back of their head. We might have them in a folder somewhere. Keep their contact information handy because you're going to be looking for um, evaluators, and I'll, got, I'll talk a little bit more about that in a few minutes. Um, so make sure you have, um, on top of having wonderful relationships with all of these people, having their contact information um, nearby and sort of your, a reminder of how you work with them as possibilities for those documents in the future. You got in your packet um, the checklist for promotion as well as ESS. So that's pretty you know, straightforward. As, as you know, some of these things are not going to apply. Um, a teaching portfolio, for example, is going to appear in there, and that's something that's not going to apply. So there are categories um, that may or not apply to you. Um, in my department, we have we have our sort of our unit is is the college and school. So again, there's not going to be separate recommendations from those, and it's going to vary widely. When you start going through this process, you're going to make some phone calls, and you're going to look really hard for a department that looks a lot like yours. Because if I went to somebody in library and information science, you saw their excellent website, their process is different because they're such a large unit. So it's um, good to get as much information from different areas as possible so that you're guided well. I love this item number seven that says personal statement and then it has the word optional. <laughs> why on earth, <laughs> why on earth would you uh, not do that? Um, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself but that's okay because um, we're, we're on a time limit here a little bit. Um, the promotion packet goes to a group of people that may or may not know you. Your ESS packet is sort of a comfortable thing because it's your peers and most of, most of the time it's people you work with on a very regular basis, um, see you every day. For promotion, it's a committee that changes every year. There may be somebody that doesn't work with you at all. There may be all people that don't work with you at all. So you are really have to be focused on telling them who you are, showing them who you are, and that personal statement is a huge part of that. Um, for my packets, this is about three pages long, um, and I addressed each, um, you know, the job effectiveness, professional achievement, and uh, service separately, and then had a sort of write-up at the end. Um, I'm not going to read through those things here now. Um, Rebecca talked about, in, for the ESS packet, um, there's a section called evidence of how great you are. Um, here, there's a miscellaneous information section. And that sort of, uh, that to me is the evidence of how great you are section. Um, my, my personal feeling about both the professional record and this section is you want this to be easy to read. I'm this way about my resume too. I'm not one of those people who has like a three page resume that's like has paragraphs. Um, Again, when you're telling somebody about yourself, don't, don't make them feel like it's tedious already on the middle of page one. So it's, my word of caution is just to not overload that section. There was mention of including a presentation. The first time I went up, I had created a presentation. Um, I just included the first slide. You know, they're going to get the idea from what you include in there. Um, so be selective. Same thing with the thank yous. Um, Hopefully, because we're all wonderful, we're going to have like, you know, really big, thick folders of thank you notes. Um, but pick a few. Again, they're going to get the idea that you're appreciated, that you're giving good service to students and your peers and your colleagues um, based on that. I've got factors, factors, factors on here. Um, I'm going to come back to that in a second. So we did mention the timeline, and thankfully that's pretty straightforward. Um, you're, you're, as you've noticed, you have to be very proactive um, in all of this, and some, of, some people are going to be in departments where there's going to be new supervisors that just don't have the background, and even old supervisors that never follow the rules right. So being as educated as possible on this is important. And um, some of these things, you know, I've had people work in solo departments that don't even know these things were sent to their dean's office. You know, they'll get a memo sent out about, uh, is anybody in your unit applying for promotion next year? Make sure that you're, if you don't hear from your supervisor, uh, is anybody might, you know, planning to apply, that you take the initiative and mention it. 
Um, because I, like I said, there's no nudge memo. There's nothing that you get specific. You're supposed to, but there's nothing that you get specifically that says, hey, if you're applying next year, you, now's the time to tell somebody. So sort of keep that in mind. Um, in the summer, and again, this is in your packet as well, so it's got the, the whole timeline. Um, I do want to mention this list of evaluators note. Um, I had a recent conversation with, where is she? Promotion. There she is. <laughs> there. Um, different units handle the external evaluators differently. And as with everything else, if anybody says they're an expert on this process, they're lying. So just bear with me on that. But you're going to see different procedures depending on the unit and, and how you do it. Um, you, it says candidate may submit listed preferred evaluators to unit director. And then a set, the next item on there is unit director submits list of unit preferred evaluators. So some units are going to be very strict on that, and your supervisor is going to say, this is the list of, I'm determining the list. That's, that's their prerogative to do. In my experience, there's been a sort of give and take. Like, this is the, these are the people that I would like to be asked. I've never had an issue with that. But in speaking to other people, there have been issues with that. So again, that could go... You know, either way, they may want somebody that's a faculty member that they know worked with you, that you, you know, it's, it's not, it might not have appeared on your list. Okay? So here's a sort of rough timeline. This year the deadline was February 24th is? What's the date? <laughs> is it tomorrow? Tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. For the request that we all provided, do these have to be, is there a criteria for who these people have to be, or? No, and I was going to talk about that. I don't know if, you're, if I have it on another slide or not, but I'll just mention it. Um, there, is, there is not criteria. Um, I, my goal in doing it has been to try to have a variety of people, like to, people who have different types of interactions with you. So, um, I, like I said, I've had faculty who I work with on their admissions, their admissions committee work as part of my job. I've had professional um, peers from professional organizations from when I served on a conference committee or board. Um, I've had officers in other units on campus, um, such as registration or university advising, and Ricardo's holding his hand up. Um, so for me, it's been trying to find a variety of people that can speak to my skills. There's actually a document on the Polo's website that's uh, in line. that talks about the additional evaluation. You've got it written correctly up here. You mentioned external, and for right. most for a long right. time, they don't have to be external. Right. They might be. Uh, but it actually, there, there is a statement of values. It, it, the departments handle them differently sometimes, I think, but their underlying values, it should be somebody who can speak to your professional achievement, your service, or your job performance. So those three categories. They should be able to speak to that, uh, which means oftentimes it's people who know you've worked with you, but then on the balancing side, not so closely working with you. So somebody who you've co-authored with, somebody who you've done numerous presentations with, that has, would, would go on to question their, um, whether or not they'd be overly biased for you. And that's the, the two things that goes, it comes from the faculty side, where they used to, they have external evaluators because they're looking at the publishing. And so they don't want, they want somebody who can fairly judge your work, but not be so closely committed to you. And so over years, it's corrected itself here. You can have people who are in your department, in the college, outside, it's additional advice. Uh, that, that terminology is important because there's still some holdouts yeah. where they, they say it has to be external. It doesn't have to be external, but it does. The, who picks it gets to be um, by the the unit controls it, uh, the administrators. But it varies different places. A lot of times your your peers, depending on where you're at, don't know who to get. So they when they welcome those suggestions, and the committee at the top level, the university level, sees just the notation of who ultimately decided. And then you're allowed to have, I believe, two that you pick beyond whatever your administration picks. So you can add some in, even if they control the district. Thank you. And I remember the external additional that was a lot controversy a few yeah. years ago. And I, you see how I just left no, both words no, off entirely? Yeah, no, yeah, <laughs> but it's yeah. a, it is additional. It used to say external. That was a whole yeah. different yeah. energy, but that was changed back in 2008. Yes, Cynthia. So, do the nine grants have to be the level above? No, nope. no, and, and this—they may not, is, be, academic they may not be academic staff at all. Okay. Your committee, the committee, is where oh, they're, okay. they have to be at or above the level you're going to. And typically, how many do you need? Uh, 
want to say four? Four. 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 Yeah. four. <laughs> yes. Can they be formal methods? I don't see Okay. Absolutely. <coughs> yep, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, so like I mentioned somebody that I work on a conference committee with. They have no affiliation with the university at all. They, as long as they can meet those guidelines, I'll say guidelines, feel like the Pirates of the Caribbean guidelines that uh, Ricardo mentioned. So is it four, like they're going to pick four, or do you list it? <coughs> And they pick four out of those. That's what varies together yeah. with your unit. And if you have a question, if it doesn't sound right, then check with the union office and we work with the local office. I think I had six. That's kind of yeah. it. Okay. Yes. Yeah. 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 I see people are sort of peeling away here a little bit. Um, I've got a couple, just a couple more slides, um, just about continuing the timeline. Um, in the contract, you can see exactly who um, is assigned to be on the committee, so there are um, specifics for that. Um, we review the, they review the information online. I've already mentioned this a, bit, a little bit. Um, they're your peers, but, I mean, you're reviewing people that are doing very different jobs than you, so um, that's the most critical thing with promotion. Um, it's important with ESS, but with promotion, that's the critical uh, distinction. And then when you're notified. I do you just want to mention being on the committee? Who in here has been on the promotion committee? Okay, so not that many. So hopefully, I'm just going to make a couple of comments, but if you have anything else, please, please, you know, your experience might be really different than mine. Um, but you'll see, um, I think that sometimes there's this confidence that goes to, well, if I apply and I've been here a certain amount of time, I'm going to get promoted, and it does not work that way. Um, it's, there's definitely sort of down to the detail discussion about the candidates. We look at everything. We look at exactly what you've used, the recommendations, not to make you nervous, but is to make you make a good case for yourself. Um, and then I mentioned factors, factors, factors earlier. Um, when I was on the committee, there was a, um, there was intense discussion about one candidate, and really the decision came down to what did that unit's factors say? And what we brought to the table was our experience with our own factors. I know what mine say. I know what my level of attainment should be to apply to it for a three or a four. But this unit's factors were very different. And so the committee really had to say, you know what, in this case, this is what we're looking at. This is what we need to make our base our decision on. And that's what we ultimately did. But it was, you know, it got down to that where we opened up that page and said, okay, what exactly is in it for this department? Anything, does anybody else who's served on the committee want to add to that? Um, I just had a question because I've asked and my department does not have factors, so we were always told to go like off our, like when we got hired, what the job description said. So is that something that we <laughs> Ricardo, <like> <laughs> yeah, you're on. Everybody has university factors, yeah. and there are, there are many of us who don't have department level factors mm -hmm. or sometimes even college level factors. Mm -hmm. If you're in an area that, if you're an SDS, um, there's not. So you so work like, with, start off with that. University, university everybody has factor. university levels. Yeah. And then you have your job description. Okay, so and like our... As soon as you get enough people with ESS, which is three, yeah. get some together. Okay. And, and, okay. But their factors that they would use would be the universities. The university and the job description. Some specific those two things together. <laughs> any other, anybody else who's been on the committee have any crazy, wonderful insights into what that was like. <laughs> Any other questions? That's, that's what I, that's what I got. Mm -hmm. I it. We ended on time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs>